Hi guys, um, we're going to start reading the children's Homer. I'm going to give you a little background information before we begin. The children's Homer is a book that combines the stories from the Iliad and the Odyssey, two very famous epic, epic poems. The Iliad and the Odyssey were both written about, well, the Iliad was about the Trojan War itself, and the Odyssey was about Odysseus's journey home after the Trojan War. Um, this is not even though the originals were written as epic poems, this story is written as, in prose. It tells the story of Odysseus from his participation in the Trojan War to his long and challenging journey home. Achilles, aided by the gods, waged war against the Trojans. The story will take us through Odysseus's journey home after the war, where the word of Odyssey in English comes from, Odysseus, Odyssey. So we will follow his journey. So the first part really is the Iliad, the actual um, story of the Trojan War. And the second part is more about the journey home, which is the Odyssey, taken from the Odyssey. So we will start reading chapter one. There will be a list of characters I'm going to post on Google Classroom. Um, so you can check that pull that up and keep it kind of next to you when we read to keep track because it might get a little bit confusing. This is the story of, Od of Odysseus, the most renowned of all the heroes of Greek poets have told us of, of Odysseus, his wars and his wanderings. And this story of Odysseus begins with his son, the youth who was called Telemachus. It was when Telemachus was a child of a month old that a messenger came from Agamemnon the great king, bidding Odysseus betake himself to the war against Troy that the king, kings and princes of Greece were about to wage. The wise Odysseus, foreseeing the disasters, foreseeing meaning seeing ahead, right? The disasters that would befall all that entered that war was loath to go. Loath meaning he did not really want to go. He was hesitant. And so when Agamemnon's messenger came to the island of Ithaca, where he was king, Odysseus pretended to be mad, and mad we mean crazy, not angry, and that the messenger Palamedes might believe he was mad indeed. He did a thing that no man ever saw being done before. He took an ass and an ox and yoked them together to the same plow and began to plow a field. And when he had plowed, oops, skip the page there. page two on here, but when he had plowed the furrow, he sowed it with seeds that would grow, but with, but with salt. I'm sorry. When Palamedes saw him doing this, he was nearly persuaded that Odysseus was mad. But to test him, he took the child Telemachus and laid him down in the field in the way of the plow. Odysseus, when he came near to where the child lay, turned the plow aside and thereby showed that he was not a madman. Then, had he to take King Agamemnon's summons, summons meaning a calling there. And Agamemnon's word was that Odysseus should go to Aulis, where the ship of the kings of Prince of Greece were being gathered. But first, he was to go into another country to seek the, the hero Achilles, and persuade him also to enter the war against Troy. And so Odysseus bade goodbye to his infant son, Telemachus, and to his young wife, Penelope, and to his father, Old Laertes. And he bade goodbye to his home and his lands and to the island of Ithaca, where he was king. He summoned a council of the chief men of Ithaca and, comment, and commanded to their care his wife and his child and all of his households. And thereafter, he took his sailors and his fighting men with him, and he sailed away. The years went by, and Odysseus did not return. After ten years, the city was taken by the kings and princes of Greece, and the thread of war was wound up. So the war had ended. It was a ten-year war. But still, Odysseus did not return. And now minstrels came to Ithaca with word of the deaths or the homecomings of the heroes who had fought in the war against Troy. So the minstrels, the messengers, were coming and saying who's coming back, who had um, been killed in the war, but there was no word of Odysseus. We still hadn't, um, we don't know whether he was of dead or alive. But no minstrel bore any word of Odysseus to his death, of his death, or his appearance in any land known to men. 
Ten years more went by, and now that infant son, whom he had left behind, Telemachus, had grown up, and was a young man of strength and purpose. So Telemachus now is about 20 years old, because there's 10 years of war, 10 years after the war had ended.